Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. And um, let's see, I don't think we have any newcomers today, so we'll just move right along. Um, I would like to go um, ahead and introduce our guest speaker, who's also sitting at the keyboard. Um, most of you know Jaziana Shelley as our speaker and our musician today. Um, she's a treasured, long-standing member of the Central Ohio Unity community. As always, we start with prayer. And we're very inclusive in our prayers and unity, holding the highest in mind and heart for ourselves, each other, our communities, and our world. If you're listening online, please remember that you can send in a prayer request at any time by going to our website, unitydelawareohio.org, and using the prayer request tab at the top of the page. Josiana will lead us into prayer with a song by Lisa Ferraro called Open Wide My Heart. And know we can always come back home. 
Thank you for unfolding us in peace, grace, and your never-ending love. And for all things, in all things, we say thank you. And so it is. Amen. Come back home. <clears throat> Pardon me. An original song and the title of the talk today. I wandered far away from myself. Was in a desert lost. When all at once there was a sudden shift. As my mind began to count the cost, then a thought occurred. I can come back home. Reclaim my soul. Disconnected, 
lost track of your inner compass, out of sorts. Perhaps a time during the past 18 months. Though J.K. Tolkien said, all who wander are not lost, sometimes it can certainly feel that way. In the song, then a thought occurred, I can come back home. I remember during my youth traveling on the Pennsylvania Turnpike on summer vacation. It was so much fun to get away. And then it took forever to get back home. And I remember seeing that big red, white, and blue sign, Ohio, the heart of it all. And I would think to myself, I'm almost home. So today, I'm referring to home as feeling connected and in alignment with your authentic true self. Showing up in the world as a powerful being infused with all the attributes and characteristics of God individualized as you. So how do we reclaim and maintain our home connection during times of unprecedented change, whether in here or out there in the world? First of all, we focus on our heart. It's interesting that our heart is in the center of our body. It's the true essence of who we are. Proverbs 4.23 reads, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Unity teaches the heart is the visible expression of an invisible center of consciousness. The word heart in scripture represents the subconscious mind. Spiritual teacher Ruby Lilia Wallace says, the heart is a seat of higher consciousness, a springboard for self-transformation. Our heart has its own intelligence and intuitive qualities. Our heart beats an average of 100,000 times a day, 35 million times a year, Thank you, heart. Gratitude helps our heart to be happier and healthier. A heart filled with gratitude is a beacon for more things to be grateful for. When we are focused on the goodness of God in life, it changes us from inside out. Another thing that makes our heart happy is to listen to what it's saying. The Motown group, The Stylistics, made a song called Stop, Look, Listen. Listen to what your heart is saying. Love. The heart always knows the real truth. One day during my youth, my cousin Gary came to our house. He came to say goodbye because he was moving to LA to pursue his dream of being a professional drummer. I remember asking him, what about college? He explained that he was a drummer. That's what he loved, and that's what he was going to pursue. A couple of years ago, we had a long conversation, and I told him how he inspired me, that I was proud of him, and that he really had it right the whole time. He said, I was never rich. Sometimes it was hard, but I did what I loved every day. Gary passed away last month. He was a professional drummer, a great musician, and influential in music circles in LA, for over 50 years. The poet Rumi said, the heart is nothing but the seat of light and the place of the vision of God. Here's an interesting uh, method to experiment with regarding your heart. Ask a question in writing with your dominant hand and then write the response you feel or hear with your non-dominant hand. It's always beneficial to live from your heart. And then once something is in our heart that we'd love to be, do, have, or experience, we can allow it to unfold in divine order and right timing while still remaining true to our heart's desire. So being open is our next step. We are surrounded by pure spirit, perfect law, divine order, and limitless substance which intelligently responds to us. It is not only around us, but it is also in us. It is around and in everything. It is the essence of perfect action. It is perfect action in our affairs. 
For everything, there is a season. God, spirit, the universe, has ways and means we know not of. And by surrendering the how, we can be fully present in our day-to-day -day journey, wherever it may lead us. Have you ever desired something and had no idea how it could come about? And then you had miracles along the way to manifesting it? Of course. I call this living in the question. You ask a question or make a request, and then you leave space and you let spirit, life, handle the details and the timing. Sometimes the next step is to wait. Other times you might be inspired to take a certain action. You might receive a phone call, a text, or email pertaining to your question or your request. Or maybe you're in the right place at the right time, which is a great affirmation, by the way. And you have an unexpected encounter or meet someone who helps you on your path. This might occur at the grocery store, at a gas station, or even at the post office. And to keep it light, sometimes I say to myself, what if, and then you fill in the blank. And my favorite one is, how cool would it be if, fill in the blank. Just keep walking in the direction of your desire. And pay attention because sometimes you might receive an answer or information from a billboard, a song on Sirius or the radio, or even from a book falling off a shelf, which actually happened to me. You can also use your imagination tool if you choose. Unity's Emmett Fox taught the mental equivalent. He said, for anything you seek, including health, friends, opportunities, and above all, the understanding of God, you supply yourself with the mental equivalent and the thing must come to you. Sky loved nature and had a heart's desire to save trees, but how? She thought, maybe I'll become an attorney and write conservation grants to save trees. There were a few obstacles, however. She had no funds for law school, she was older than the typical law school student, and she was caring for a parent. Skye applied the what if in a series of inspired actions. She took the law school admission test, did well. She thought, I think I'll apply to law school. Even if I get in, I don't have to go, I don't have the money. She applied to law school was accepted and received scholarship money to cover tuition and expenses. Today she's an attorney and on her way to her heart's desire, saving trees. She remained open and kept taking the next step. So you do what you can with what you have and spirit will handle the rest. Our next step on our way home is to mine, M-I-N-E, our mind, M-I-N-D, Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. One of the latest mind studies found that we think at least 6,200 thoughts per day. And the thing is, only about 5% of our thoughts of our cognitive thinking is conscious, and it's estimated that 95% of the thoughts we think today are the ones we thought yesterday. And up to 80% of those may be negative. If you're gonna chop down a 50-foot tree and you have a handheld hand saw, that's probably not gonna chop the tree down. Even if you have an electric saw, you've gotta sharpen it. So it's important to monitor our thoughts because we want our default to be connected to our true essence and the light within us. According to Unity co-founder Charles Fillmore, the one and only formative part power given to us is thought. By our thinking, we not only make character, but body and affairs. For as we thinketh within ourselves, so are we. We see things as we are, not necessarily as they are. In the song, have you settled for the ultimate deception? Seek and find, alter your perception. Listen and know, you can come back home, be in congruence, head and heart. To get there, we use our main tools in unity, which are prayer and meditation. They're the cornerstone of our spiritual life. 
Do you remember the Bible parable of the two builders? One built a house out of stone, the other built a house out of sand. The storms and the rain came. The house made of stone stood strong, was flexible, and could bend without breaking. The house made out of sand was not able to weather the storms. We have several storms slash challenges in our world right now. And in our teaching, the house represents our mind. So one way we can all help is by investing time every day and building our consciousness. We are part of the collective. We make a difference. Everything is energy. So we affirm things that are true, honorable, fair, pure, acceptable, and commendable. Philippians 4.8. We deny any illusions that invoke fear, which is forgetting everything's all right. And we affirm the truth. And what is the truth? There is only one presence, one power in the universe. God the good, all powerful, everywhere present. This is not easy. However, every time we overcome a challenge and learn and grow, our spiritual muscles get stronger, just like our physical muscles get stronger when we work out. There's always a blessing and a lesson in most things. And during difficult seasons, remember, this too shall pass. Always aim to purify your thoughts, and everything will be well. Gandhi. What you have in your heart and your head, no one can take from you. My mom. <laughs> <laughs> Be a lifelong learner. Read, listen to podcasts, travel, enjoy art, learn from YouTube, and have stimulating conversations. Just setting aside 15 minutes a day to sit, think, and pray makes a huge difference. Neuroscience shows a 50-year-old can have the brain of a 25-year-old if you sit quietly and do nothing for 15 minutes a day. Visualize your best life, your brain and your heart. Well, thank you. It's so much easier to enjoy life when we enjoy great health. So our last step to coming home is energize. <laughs> great self-care is a main component of coming home. Taking time to invest in you raises your physical and emotional energy while lowering stress. I encourage energy experiments as part of self-care. Buckminster Fuller, the inventor of the geodesic dome and other architectural innovations, and a humanitarian, lived his entire life as an experiment. So eat well, try different foods, notice how you feel in your body and your energy level after meals. Find the best plan for your body. Stay hydrated, how much water feels right, and relax. Do you enjoy deep breathing? soothing music, poetry. Stress may cause inflammation, which can be taxing on the body. Stay connected. Chat with a friend or family member by phone or text. Get enough good quality sleep. Do you feel better with a short nap each day? And remember recess. We as adults sometimes forget the many benefits of play and laughter, especially brain games. And my very favorite, just Get moving. Dance. Take a walk. Wiggle your fingers and toes. March. Stretch if you can. Work on your balance. If you're going to start a new exercise program, remember to check in with your medical team. But know this. One small habit can improve your mental clarity, your flexibility, your mood, and sometimes change your life. When we change a habit, we create new neural pathways in our brain. And over time, with repetition, the habit becomes your new normal. My athletic inspiration, Ida Keeling, started running at age 67 as therapy after losing two sons to violence. She felt, she felt stronger and better. At age 93, she set a world record for her age group in a race in France. At the age of 100, in 2016, she became the first woman in history to complete a 100-meter run at the Penn Relays, the oldest, largest track and field competition in the U.S. 
She was still running last year at age 105. She passed away in August at age 106. So we have happy heart, be open, mind our mind, and energize. We've touched all the bases. We have our own home run and the World Series of us. So I share with you one of my favorite passages by Tagore. Spring has passed. Summer is gone. Winter is here. And the song I meant to sing remains unsung. For I have spent my days stringing and unstringing my instrument. Harry Bernstein was stuck. His wife passed away, and he was lonely. He started writing a book, The Invisible Wall, a love story that broke barriers. He started the book at age 93, and it was published when he was 96. I invite you to get in tune and in touch with your heart. Who would you love to be? What experiences would you enjoy? Is there anything you would like to release? Your heart knows. Your heart always knows the way home. Because there's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. May we close with prayer. Dear Father, Mother, God, we're so very grateful for heart visions that inspire us, that help us to grow, that help us to find our voice and our courage. We ask this week and going forward that we tune in and get in touch with our hearts to see what those visions are that you've placed there and know that you will provide the means for them to come to fulfillment. For this and many other blessings and for the blessings of the perfection in this moment, we give thanks and so it is. Amen. Namaste. <clears throat> This song is One With Thee, and I feel happy when I play and sing this song. It's an original song. Bye.